Hey there, Sagittarius, and welcome back to Bon Echo Tarot. I am here with your February 2021 reading. Astrology specific to you and tarot, plus a couple of other cards that I'm going to pull at the end. So, Sagittarius, crazy month, February. Be prepared. Um, one of the things that, um, that you're going to find uh, is that... Um, for the next two years or so, the focus for you is going to be on communication. So uh, it's the third house, and this is getting kicked off with this big stellium in Aquarius, which is essentially a planet party. So a bunch of planets are in Aquarius for the month of February, which many astrologers are saying that this is the threshold into the New Age. So it's big times, and the energies that are ushering in this age are quite intense. So for you, like I said, with the stellium in Aquarius, you know, you've got a couple of planets that are going to be in this house, Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn for two years, Jupiter for one. So it's going to be a lot of feeling of expansion and contraction, specifically with regards to your ability to communicate. So, um, you know, whether it's hesitating to communicate because you're not sure that you have the words for something or whether it's speaking your truth like most Sagittarius's love to do. And as I said in the global reading, which you can find the link right up here, that's going to help you understand the universal experience. But what I said in that reading was that Sagittarius is going to feel these energies in terms of foot and mouth and the challenges around the third house and communication stuff, um, you know, what you say and how you communicate is going to be really important for this next little while. So, of course, if there's a whole bunch of planets in Aquarius, why leave out Mercury? Especially if Mercury is going to go retrograde. And this is where the challenges come for you, Sagittarius, in terms of knowing what to say and when to say it. That's going to be really tricky. So you should err on the side of, of, of caution always. It's not that what you're saying is wrong. It's just that the timing of it may not hit people the way you want it to. So it's, it's about listening. It's about that active listening thing. So that you, you know, so... Use those kinds of tactics to sort of avoid the pitfalls of maybe experiences that you've already had where, you know, when somebody says something to you, then you repeat it back to them to let them know that you actually heard it. And it'll be that kind of, those kinds of exercises you're going to find are going to be really helpful to you. Um, you should also be proofreading any work that you're creating like crazy this month, like Proofread it, you know, if you're normally, you know, double checking it, like triple or quadruple check because you'll be really happy that you did. And whatever mistakes that you catch, you're going to go, oh my God, like if I hadn't caught that, oh my God, that would have been a disaster, you know, stuff like that. So that's why you want to get ahead of the game on this communication thing. Because you know how, how key that is in pretty much everything you do. <laughs> so, um, so the other tense kind of aspects that are coming in are the ones that have to do with Uranus and with Mars. But first, let's talk a little bit about this Saturn square Uranus dynamic. And that's on February 17th. That's going to be where your Saturn is in your third house, squaring Uranus, which is in your sixth house of daily routines and health. So you got to ask yourself how those two themes fit together. Um, you know, like maybe you need to improve your communications at work or wherever you're spending most of most of your day, I guess, in, in these circumstances, could be anywhere, right? So it's about improving your routines to facilitate better communication and to avoid any sort of um, misunderstandings around 
the day-to-day, -day, whether it's within your home or, like I said, at work. So then we're dealing also with Mars and Uranus in Taurus. This is the sixth house dynamic. So for the next, pretty much the whole month of February and just into the first little bit of March, Mars is going to be working with Uranus in Taurus to improve your health and daily routine. So you may find that even with the tension, it may... It, the, the tensions will create situations that can't be ignored anymore. And the solution to those situations are going to be really evident to you. So now that we got the tough stuff over with, let's get back to the moon. So we've got the new moon in Aquarius on February the 11th. And that is actually going to be a really great opportunity for you to socialize and to mix and mingle with, with kindred spirits whether that's something that you're doing on Zoom or socially distanced in some way. Um, but it, it's definitely going to be something that you're going to want to make time for around February the 11th because the energies are going to be pretty tense from February 15th until the 22nd-ish around there. So, um, But then after all that crazy tension, we've got a full moon in Virgo. That's happening in your 10th house of career and reputation. So you're going to be uh, around this full moon towards the end of February after all of this crazy tension about your day your or your day-to-day your -day routines. You're going to, you know, it's all going to kind of fall into place and you're going to go, aha, I'm going to follow my intuition on this one thing for my career. And in the process of that, you are realizing that your role is facilitating others' healing in your ability to lead by example. So, you know, it's like, so people are watching you as you navigate your changes. And it's possible that those people will be integrating what they see you're doing into their own process. So you're not necessarily going to be teaching people right up front. People are watching you, not in a stalker way, but in a way where it's like, gee, you know, very interesting technique that Sagittarius has of handling that kind of situation. You know, it's going to be that kind of dynamic. So if you, if you are aware... <laughs> you know, of the fact that you are in the spotlight, because that's, that's essentially what's going to happen. Um, it is the full moon, after all. In your 10th house, that means you're going to have some visibility. And, you know, chances are it's going to be something that's really going to empower you. So, Sagittarius, that's enough of that. Um, stay tuned, because I'm likely to go live a few times, maybe do some weekend vibes here and there. I'm just kind of getting used to my routine, you know? Um, heading into the Mercury retrograde of all the things I got to reflect on. <laughs> so we're all in this together. All right, so Sag, there's your first card. Oh! Ooh. Are we thinking too much, Sag? You know, it's all part of the process. Um, there could be some things that you're really, really concerned about. Ah, oh, about a new beginning. So one of the things about Mercury retrograde phases is that it does give us that time, you know, it's kind of like you might notice the more conscious you are of, of the Mercury cycle, you know, that it's kind of like, oh, okay, I just thought I was, I was like, yeah, I'm so jazzed and passionate about this direction I'm going in. And then Mercury retrograde comes in and goes, hurry and says, regroup. So, this may be what's happening, you know, in a lot of respects, you know, we've got, we've got Uranus to thank for this, because, you know, Uranus is the planet of surprise, the planet of shaking things up, and it's also Aquarius's ruler. So, considering the dynamic change between the Piscean Age and the, and the Aquarian one, Every sign of the zodiac is feeling it, as you've seen in my other report, because you should really watch it. 
Okay, so at the bottom of your reading, the foundation is justice. So there could be a Libra involved in your situation, or, uh, you know, this could be, um, you know, the right outcome for you according to the path that you've been on so far. Um, this new contract, it could be a new contract. If it's a new contract, do not sign until March. Like not even, you know, okay. So people say Mercury goes direct on the 20th. So sign on the 21st. No, no. And one of the things that I, that I've also emphasized in the other video is that we're all very much at the mercy of events of fate that are approaching, you know, and this is the February 17th one, especially, you know, this is when stuff is going to happen. That's going to shake things up and bring clarity to pretty much any situation that you're finding confusing or anxious. Well, in the past we have the Six of Cups. So, um, Six of Cups can represent nostalgia, it can represent soulmates, it can represent childhood friends. So there may have been uh, something along those lines in the recent past for you, Sag. Um, nope, not that one. Okay. Nine of Cups. So, um, yeah, there are other signs who are getting this Nine of Cups. So it's like you've got the Nine of Anxiety and the Nine of Cups. Are you, are you anxious that maybe all of your dreams are coming true? You know, are you thinking, um, <laughs> are you afraid that Uranus is going to pull the rug out from underneath you? I don't think so. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, you know, um, it looks as though the path has been leading you to this moment. Oh yeah. And you're ready to go. You're ready to move and shake and you are emotionally balanced. Congratulations. You also could have a water sign, um, approaching you in the near future. Um, but these are very mature, loving, any, you know, energies, um, emotional availability, that kind of thing. Let's see what the rest of the cards. So what's the card for you, Sag? The card for you is recovery. You're moving out of drama and bullshit and, you know, basically a lot of irritation into a much more peaceful existence. And your environment, <laughs> it's temperance. So it's all Sag all the time. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's peace. There's peace in your peace. You've got, I'm feeling all of this peace and justice and balance and Wow, that can only take you far. Oh my goodness gracious, in your hopes and fears, the sun. I think you are a little afraid of your success. And the burden that it might become. Oh, Sag. Okay. This card has come up so much for this month. Aries. And yet Aries is really in kind of a place where they're, where they're really retreating because it's way too intense for them right now, you know, and, and now they've got, um, now they've got Mars in their second house. So it's all about, uh, values. You know, it was about their identity and pushing forward for the last six months, but at early January is when it switched over and we're going to have uh, Mars in Taurus until the end of February. So, okay. So there may be some anxiety um, around this new beginning. 
around your desires and wishes coming true. It's about trust. Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's about trust. And whether or not, you know, the people in your life are fleeting, are they, are they leaving you out in the cold? Or are they bringing you along for the party? You know? Um, it's about trust. This feeling of left out. I wonder if 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 you're you're pretty much past it but it's still lingering there's like little seeds of it still in there that you're ferreting out but i don't think you're going to be finished with that process and again it's about maybe it's about communicating you know learning how to communicate um when you're feeling like this you know when you're feeling out in the cold when you're feeling marginalized um Okay, I can get the little cards out here so that I can get an idea. You also could have a Sagittarius. There could be a Sagittarius in your environment. It could be Sag and Sag. Um, and it's like you're moving towards someone who has come into a new stage of enlightenment, who's come into a new stage of emotional balance. And this person actually might be the one who's going to help you with your communication or lack of it. But there is a new beginning. That's, I think you know it's there. You just aren't ready to step into it yet. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're not ready to step into it yet. You're still very much in conversation with the divine. Oh, and look at that. The Ten of Wands, Ten of Wands. Oh my goodness, it's clarifying your first card and it's your... What is this burden, Sag? You know, um, are you focused too much on your work? And avoiding communication. Because that's perpetuating the cycle of anxiety around it. It's like you know what has to be done. Alright, so the Ace of Pentacles. You start with a lover. But you're not really connected. Oops. <laughs> In this card, the lovers are not touching. So this might be someone that you're not with at the present time, but you're thinking about them. Maybe that's what you're thinking about too much. And this is um, this is regarding someone from your past. If it is a relationshipy kind of thing, and then oh, the moon. So maybe at some point during the moon phases, and, you know, um, I should be also reminding you that I'm doing this reading within the gate of the Leo full moon. So, um, so there's something that may have happened as a result of the energies of intense full moon, I'll tell you, in Leo, big time. And most of the astrologers were saying that it really was about a breakdown in the ego, that everyone's kind of getting an ego check up you know on whether we're in our ego or whether we're operating from the heart and this is again you know big themes for this year for all signs is um is working from the wisdom of the heart as much as you possibly can in a world that has been cultivated to make sure that you don't do that so therein lies some of the tension you know, you don't have to take full responsibility for whatever difficulties you may be facing right now. Because the environment, you know, that we all live in is not hospitable to that sort of um, 
healing. Yeah. Yeah. This is someone from the past that um, were, truly was a love in the truest sense of the word where two people approach one and one another like, do you see? You can almost even see the energy. It's like, there they are as kids. And then, you know, now they each have a cup to offer one another. That's very sweet. Let's throw another card on that for a little bit more insight. Yeah, it's your nine of cups. <laughs> so whoever this person is, they're your absolute dream come true. So look at how terrified you are. <laughs> I don't mean to laugh at you, Sag, but you know, it's, um, this may be uh, the kind of thing where it's like, this is your deepest, deepest secret that this is your ideal person. And, you know, and it's been a burden on your mind, you know, to be holding it within. Ah, there goes the communication thing again, you know, the, the sort of most private, intimate space. Yeah, you're tired. You're tired of keeping it in. Nine of cups, nine of wands, you know, you can't keep it in any longer. You're going to have to, yeah, you're going to have to work on, on this with kindness and grace for yourself first and foremost. Yep. <laughs> it's about communication and boundaries by the King of Aquarius right there. That's what, that's what the King of Aquarius is going to demand of you is that you really need to work through these limiting beliefs that you have around communicating your truth. Because it's about trust. That's what it's going to be. It's going to be about trust. And look at that. We've got um, the King of Cups. So someone mature, emotionally available, and with something significant to offer. You know, I, I point out often that, you know, there's, there's a fish in that cup. So that isn't, that isn't an empty, empty promise or anything. It's, it's the real deal. Okay. So we're on the six of swords. Justice. So maybe something legal turned in your favor, um, or maybe just the energies of all this change with the people that you're interacting with has brought justice to a situation. No more drama, no more of the stuff. Something has brought justice. The Queen of Cups. So, um, you know, this is the nurturing, loving, um, although the queen of cups, when I, when I compare the king and the queen, um, you know, queen of cups might be a little less emotionally available. She may be, um, you know, and, and, you know, like everything from the worst extreme of, you know, holding their feelings back in a toxic way to just feeling that your heart and your feelings are sacred and should not be shared with everybody, you know? So that's kind of, you know, it's a very sacred time within for you. And it's like the, the, the sacredness that goes with a true union, you know? where it's like you can feel it. You can feel it in your heart. So what do we got here? Oh my goodness. So we've got on the temperance card, taking an inventory of the past, you know, um, 
you know, whoever you're involved with may have had to go through some significant self-examination and accountability and really take stock of their actions, you know? Yeah. And to communicate that, it's really important that communication occur between you and someone from the past. Because there are lies. There is deception. And that person may be looking for atonement, which is where the justice comes in. You know? Um, and which is why you're being cautious with your heart and emotions. Yeah. And this person is going to have a timeout for February, I think. I think what they may do is they may they may surface to say um, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm going way off here, but it, it's like, you know, look, I've done some serious self-examination. I was really horrible to you. I lied to you. I cheated on you. I just need you to know it. I don't need your apology right now. Um, and if I don't ever deserve it, that's okay too. And then they retreat and take their time out. But you've been given the truth so that you can really assess. What am I looking for here? Ah, you know, so that you can put this dynamic to rest. So you can stop thinking about it because it's kind of like, you know, there's a lie. You know that somebody hasn't been honest with you. But you're still waiting, and it's a burden, and it's a secret, and I don't know what to do about it. And then, then the secret comes out, and everybody takes a time out. We'll get to this Ten of Wands thing at the end and see what that's all about. Because, you know... Like I said, the, the, the energies of February are not going to release you from your burdens, but they're going to give you a little bit more insight as to how to lay them down. Even if you're not ready to communicate it. So we've got, in hopes and fears, we've got, oh, we, got a, we might have a Leo here, Sag, um, somewhere in your picture. Because there's the sun and the strength card. So that's like double Leo cards right there. Um, you know, you could just want happiness. Uh, you could just want um, want to feel stronger about this situation. It's like, I wish I had the strength to do this thing that I got to do. But the thing is, is that you're in a process of learning how to do the thing that you want to do. And that's going to take a little bit of time. So, let's see here. You know, you're building the script. So, we've got the Four of Wands clarifying the Ten of Wands. So, the tension it could be within your home and family. And uh, this dynamic could feel like a real burden. But I think that it's actually bringing you closer to a healthier dynamic at home. Especially if, what, what were we talking about for you, Sag? Yeah, it's about your sixth house of daily routines. So, you know, it's like if, if things at home are a burden then maybe, you know, just adding simple routines and structure is going to make all the difference in terms of everybody feeling nurtured and at home in the space. Yeah. So there's the eight wands. Chances are you're going to find a solution to, to your tension and the sense of burden. It's like once, it's like again, everybody's looking for that breakdown that's leading to a breakthrough. It's just in different areas. So for you, it's in communication. It's in your daily routine. 
And what's that last one again? And then, you know, and your 10th house and then the visibility that comes once you've, you know, assimilated a lot of the different lessons. As things proceed, it's going to take just one small message to get the movement going so that you can drop those wands off your back. There we go. Yeah. And then you can charge forward <laughs> into the future. So, you know, just a little bit of, of struggle through the month of February. Um, again, you know, you are mirroring many of the other signs and all of our universal experience of these dynamics. And, you know, it's a process. So uh, trust and have faith that you and the people you're interacting with are all learning valuable lessons that are going to enable everyone to move forward in a really good way. All right, so I'm going to pull my Oracle of E deck out because it's my favorite. No, that's not your card. Um, so what do we have for Sagittarius for February? Heartbeat. Stay in your heart space, Sag. That's where it's all taking place for you right now because it's truth, it's trust, it's, it's you know, your soul. So um, don't rush it. Don't rush it. Because underneath it all, you're a live wire and you're ready to go. But you don't want to be sparking and shorting everybody out as you, you know, flip your switches. So tweak the communication struggles that you have in your home and daily environment and, um, and be receptive to learning something new. And remember, listening is going to be key for you as you go through this stuff. So here's the last card for the reading. This is from my Marshall McLuhan deck, The Distant Early Warning. It's a collector's piece and my favorite. Um, a friend of mine is, uh, is learning hypnosis and wow, is it ever fascinating. So I'm borrowing one of her terms for this particular card pull. I am pulling um, one card for the universal experience that you are having so let's get that out of the way and then I'm going to pull a card for advice from your super conscious so let's see what happens what Marshall has to say for you well, advice from the super conscious there it is okay so energy of your universal experience Kinetic. For total awareness, the American says, I know it inside out. So that's the six of diamonds. So that could be like six of pentacles. Again, that's another form of balance that you're finding. Advice from your super conscious. <laughs> this card keeps coming out. I think there's some sexy time going on out there. Enjoy yourselves, folks. High rise and mini skirts. The end is in sight. Instant slums. Nine of hearts. Nine of cups. Wishes coming true. So um, whether you like it or not, Saj, <laughs> good news is on the way. Just a little bit of lessons before you get there. And watch what you say. Be good to you. And check out the previews that I have right after here. These are previews for my extended reading over my Patreon site, uh, career, and, uh, and a sample relationship diagnostic reading. And um, if you're interested in joining my Patreon, it's uh, just a small subscription fee, which gives you access not only to your extended reading, but the extended reading of all your family and friends. It goes back... Not quite a year, but there, um, there's, there's definitely some stuff you can take a look at that may help you figure out the kind of learning path you're on right now. Uh, and then after all of that jazz, I have a little preview for a new web show that I've created called Bon Echo and Friends. 
And it's basically where me and my friends, we just have conversations about nerdy things like the brain, um, holistic health, history, and all sorts of jazz. So the first show is going to be tomorrow, uh, and I'll be premiering it on my site or on my YouTube channel. So definitely keep your eye open for that. I am trying to have them weekly. And who knows, maybe you'll become my friend and you'll join me at some point in the future. In the meantime, you know, as you work your communication stuff there, Saj, uh, have yourself a great February. And you're both, you're both dealing with being self-conscious. You both probably care too much about what other people think, but your, um, but your partner is all about communication, um, and is feeling like they're not enough, which may as a be as a result of this not being like a real match. That it's close, but it's not quite that there are wounds that need to be overcome first. This is going to lead you to a group of people who are going to provide you that kind of emotional sustenance, teamwork, and loyalty. People who have your back. You know, that, that, that one ending has actually led you to something that you really, really need. So I'm anxious to see what Marshall has to say. All right, so Marshall, from your distant early warning deck, what abstract insight can you give to Sagittarius for their career and work life for February 2021? All right. Every new technique is a service environment that junks the earlier ones. Uncle Bob, Robert Anton Wilson, a contemporary to Timothy Leary. Marshall's like, amen, sister. Amen. Right?